Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're back with an opinion video and as you read in the title, I'm talking about why Leicas are cheap in my opinion. So of course, we're gonna start off with the point that Leica cameras are not cheap to buy, but they're cheap to maintain and to keep in ownership and use. So this comes down to the fact that when you are trying to buy a Leica camera, whatever price point you have or budget, you probably will find something if you're not going for the dirt cheap. Of course, you're not gonna find a Leica camera for 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks. But if you start looking at 600 to 1,000, you will find something. And the thing is, these cameras hold the value really, really well. Uh, we're talking about, for example, this M2 I bought around 10 years ago for around 400 bucks. And it came with this light meter, which I've never used, but it works. It came with a rapid advance uh, mechanism and it still works. And that thing is already 150 bucks. This light meter is around 100 bucks. So I always considered these, this M2 button, which was my first M2 in Leica, uh, to be basically almost cost zero. Yes, prices have gone up on these cameras and on everything Leica world, but even if things hadn't gone up, Leica cameras usually sell for the same money you bought them for. So years ago, I remember reading, over a decade ago, I remember reading an article that you could buy a Leica, use it for a year, and sell it without losing money. Nowadays, most of the times, you can buy a Leica, use it for a year, and sell it next year for more money. So that is why I consider Leica cameras to be sort of an investment, and also I consider them cheap. Like I'm saying, they're not cheap to buy the first time, but they're cheap in the spectrum of time. This camera is from the 1956. We're talking that we're in uh, 2021. And nowadays, if I wanna sell it, it's worth around 1,500 to 2,000 euros. It's an M2 camera. It shoots beautifully on a 35 and 50 mil, and it holds its value really well. If you're gonna be using it, then even better, because you're gonna buy a camera, you're gonna use it for multiple years, and after those years, you're gonna be able to sell it if you decide you're over with it or you're done with it and probably get the money that you paid for. Even today, if you buy a new Leica MP or MA, you can use it for two, three years and sell it for like 500, 600 euros or dollars less than you bought it new. That is because first, Leica can't keep with demand, they can't make the MP and the MA fast enough for what people want, and second, because they are really good cameras, they uh, hold value really well, and the consumers that want them really wanna pay that money for them. And it, this is true nowadays to almost every film camera in the past decade. You could buy it for 10 and now it's 100, you could buy it for 100, now it's 1,000, but Leica cameras have really held their value really, really well almost every single model has kept the price. And this is all on the film like us, of course. If you buy a new M10D or P or anything like that, it won't hold its value as long because digital, as we know, doesn't hold value so well. But still, if you look into the market of the digital ones, the Leica M9 today sells for more than it sold three or four years ago when Leica stopped changing the sensors. And why is that? Because it's a full frame Leica camera that people like the sensor. So it's impressive that it still is 2,000, 2,500 US dollars or euros for Leica M9, which is, if I'm not wrong, over a decade old. If you go to the same models on Canon 5Ds or Nikon D700s or anything like this, you'll see that the value has killed and died to the point that they're sometimes just a couple hundred bucks for what it was considered the you know biggest and most professional cameras of the time. So yeah, I honestly, I would advise if you are wanting to get into rangefinder cameras and you've tested rangefinders before, uh, Leicas won't dis, you know, disappoint you in your investment. You can buy them as an investment, you can buy them as a user, you can buy them as a rental fee, like buy for 5,000, use for 10 years, sell for 4,000. That's around 100 bucks a year for using probably the best Leica camera made, which is the MP. You can like it or not, but it's one of the best ones. Or you can buy, like I did, an M2 for a couple hundred. If you're lucky, not so often nowadays, you're probably gonna pay a thousand or more and use it for five, six years and then sell it for pretty much the same money. Lenses also have been holding their value pretty well, but the thing with the lenses is the lenses are still made new, so they're usually 
hold their value, but they lose a bit because you can still buy a Sumicron, a Sumilux, or anything like this from Leica. The MP and the MA have been the top of Leica, so no camera is going over that price unless it's collectible or rare. So that's the thing, that's the M6, for example, is probably the one that has gone the most in high in price due to YouTubers like me or others making videos, users wanting them, them having a light meter and so on. But if you wanna go for something without a light meter like the M2 or the M3 or the M4, they're still fairly affordable and they won't break on you because they have no electronics. They're fully mechanical, they can be serviced and so on, unless you, know, you totally smash it. So yeah. To me, Leicas are cheap in the sense that you buy them, use them, and they're valuable still after you use them, uh, and you probably will get your money's worth. If we talk about modern day today, anything that you buy, be it a watch, be it an iPhone, be it an Android phone, a computer, any of these uh, you know, modern utilities we use, uh, after two, three, four years, the value is basically zero. This, you buy it, you use it and after those years, like I said, it's still valuable. And to me, that means that it's a really good investment and it's kind of cheap. You can like Leica, you can dislike Leica. I'm a Leica user. I don't consider myself a fanboy, even though I do like the cameras, but I like using them. I usually don't go around flashing the camera everywhere. But yeah, this is basically a very good investment. If you're wanting to use it, a very good investment. If you're looking for an investment, and also, you know, a mechanical camera that actually looks nice and is nice to use. This, like I said, was my first M2. I currently have three things of life, you know, end up with one too many, uh, but I still use them every week. They have been my family camera. This is what I shoot my kids with. I was just shooting here in Finland at negative 15 yesterday and camera doesn't jam, camera doesn't have a problem, keeps on shooting, of course, doesn't run out of batteries because it doesn't use them. All I have to do is keep feeding it film and it can be serviced, which is a huge deal for me uh, using film cameras in 2021 is the fact that what I buy, I wanna be able to have serviced and have four years and decades to go. And these cameras probably will end up inherited by my children uh, whenever I'm no longer here. So yeah, honestly, that's what I wanted to talk about is the fact that like us, as much as they're easy to hate on because the users usually are, you know, easier to dislike it some way or another because they like the red dot and they like talking about the cameras more than their pictures, I think are really a good investment. And honestly, if you ever wanna come over and visit me in Finland, I'll happily let you use one of my cameras. We can go shoot, we can go develop and print because that's where the beauty of photography is. It's when you go and you see results. So yeah, that's the opinion video for today. Sorry for the long ramble, but yeah, I really think that if you're considering a rangefinder and you like rangefinder cameras, you should consider picking one of these up. I'm gonna be making a video all about how to choose uh, like a camera just to make it easier for you because it's a little, um, you know, not easy to understand when you first wanna get your hands into it. But I hopefully will be able to explain it properly with examples, cameras, images, and you know, different details that you might want. But yeah, thanks for watching. As always, remember these opinion videos, I basically uh, run thanks to Patreons and donors. So I'll leave the link to those below if you feel like helping the channel out. It's been a great 2021. Uh, I really enjoyed making videos. That's the whole point of me doing these things on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed it too. And yeah, if you pick up a Leica and you've basically made money or saved money, or used it for years and then sold it or for the same money, I would love to hear your opinion. And if you don't like Leica and you bought some other camera that you're making a lot of money out of it, good for you, good for you know whoever bought it, sold it, and so on. But I enjoy these cameras a lot. They're really easy. Um, I think I heard someone say the lack of features is the best feature. To me, that's pretty much the reason I shoot them. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Bye.